music was very special. They all, thank you. <coughs> After hearing that children's story, I can see where he picked this text. <laughs> five, <laughs> First Peter 5, 8. Yeah. If you'd like to follow, First Peter, First uh, Peter five six through nine. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen. So how do we bring lions down? How do kingdoms fall? Are you ready for the attack? Are you prepared to have Satan and all his forces attacking you in your life? Let's have an added word of prayer. Father, this morning we come to you because we know that we are incapable of fighting the devil on our own. <clears throat> we need the power of Jesus Christ. And we pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this service. And we ask for your power in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you strong? Are you the strong person to face the lion? We have been experiencing a glimpse of lion attacks as we have faced the pandemic. <clears throat> there are those who, when they were when we had the lockdowns and we couldn't go to church, who felt that attack upon themselves, when there couldn't be singing in the churches. There are those who have lost their jobs because of the, it, the situations. But Revelation is clear that we are to face greater lion attacks in the future. The times when we will not be able to buy or sell. Times that we may be faced with prison and death. These times are coming upon us. And are we prepared to stand strong and to be able to, to face the lions? The question is, how big is our God? There's a beautiful story in 2 Chronicles 20 that we're going to look at today for us to be able to apply to our lives of how to be ready to face the lions. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. So with fear, what did the king do? In verses 3 and 4, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. I want to suggest this morning 
that when we face the lions and there's fear in our lives about what is about to take place, the thing to do is to fast and pray. Turn to God for the answers to be able to face that battle. Because as the story illustrated, Satan is already defeated. And if we let Jesus stand for us, then he, Satan will be defeated as he comes to attack us. So who is strong enough to fight the lion? Without God, I can't. But with God, I can. The lion, Satan, is a defeated foe as long as Jesus is my defense. And then we have the prayer that Jehoshaphat prayed. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not you God in heaven? And rule not you over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand you? These questions that he's asking are questions that point to the fact that God is big enough. That in my weakness, God is strong enough that in my inabilities to be able to battle with the lion, God is able to do it. He goes on in his prayer, Are not you our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell therein and have built you a sanctuary Therein for your name, saying, If when evil comes upon us as the sword, that would be the army coming against them, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry unto you in our affliction, then you will hear and help. There was confidence in his prayer that because they could go to the house of God and they could pray, they knew that God would hear and respond to those prayers. Do we have that confidence? I would like to suggest to you that our daily building up the strength to face the enemy is based upon our prayer life that it is the development of prayer in our experience that develops that relationship with Jesus that prepares us to face the lions. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Now, who are the tribes in the Edom, Moab, and Ammon? Edom was the tribe from Esau. They were the people from Esau, Jacob's brother. Moab and Ammon. They are the descendants of two daughters of Lot. Moab was from the older daughter. Ammon was from the younger daughter. All of these were relatives of the children of Israel. And they were coming to attack them, to annihilate them. Sometimes it may seem that our family is turning against us. The lion, the devil, will use our families to attack us. Sometimes it's church family that attacks. 
but whoever it is that Satan is using to attack us, we can trust in God for that crisis. Going on in the prayer, he says, Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us, neither know we what to do. But where are their eyes? Their eyes are upon you, upon God. Where are our eyes? What are we looking at? What is our focus on? Is it on the things of this earth? Or are we more concerned about our relationship with Jesus Christ? Our eyes focused on him. God speaks through his prophet. And so we ask the question, are we listening to his prophet speak to us today? In 2 Chronicles 20, 14, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken you all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Isn't that good news? Can't we all be rejoicing in the fact that the battle isn't ours? The lion is not attacking us. Because God is standing with us. And the prophet goes on to say, Tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziv, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. Why was God sending them out to face this battle? It was because they were seeking freedom. They wanted the freedom to be able to be the children of God. There is a movement today for freedom. The truckers and the farmers are moving to, to help freedom around this earth. But there is a greater freedom that we need to be seeking after a freedom to be able to serve God the way he is asking us to serve him. The prophet goes on and says, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I'm reminded of the story of the woman that was drugged to the feet of Jesus, claiming that she was an adulteress. And Jesus kneels down and begins to write in the sand. That finger that had written in stone the Ten Commandments that said to not commit adultery was now writing on the pavement in sand. And he said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And as those who had gathered around was looking they saw that their sins were not written in stone, but in sand. 
that could be wiped away. And then to the woman, what did he say? Go and sin no more. Is that a battle that she could fight alone? Could she stop sinning all by herself? She had to depend upon Jesus Christ for that victory. And when Jesus looks at us and says, go and sin no more, it's not in our power that that happens, but it's in the power of Jesus Christ coming in and giving to us that victory. What did Jehoshaphat do? He bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Here we see a real principle of faith. Thanking God for the answer before the evidence is seen. And then they began to praise God. The Levites, the children of the Kohathites and of the the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. We can be praising God today, can't we? For the victory he's going to give to us when it's time that we can't buy and sell. When it's time that we're facing the prison or we're facing death, we can be praising God today because he has promised us victory. He has given to us that assurance that we can be carried through that time. So let the Lord fight for you. How has the Lord fought for you? Think about your story of God fighting for you. Mine has been a battle of health issues that Satan had tried to destroy me. But by looking to Jesus, by going to his word, by prayer, he has given me victory to face that lion. Daniel had his experience facing the lions because he had had a special prayer life in his time, he was cast in with the lions. But God was there with him at that time. So believe the Lord. Believe his prophets. That is the message that Joshua's, Jehoshaphat is giving. <coughs> and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. Trust and obey. Daniel Tanner was singing in a Dwight L. Moody meeting. And it came to the end of the meeting and there was testimony that was given, being given. And one young man stood up and he was giving his testimony. And as he was giving his testimony, he said, I am not quite sure, but I'm going to trust and I'm going to Obey. Mr. Tanner sent, wrote this sentence down and sent it to a friend of his, a Mr. John Sanis, who was a businessman and a Presbyterian pastor. And he wrote the words of this song that Zoe and Sri are going to share with us at this time.
to trust and obey. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Thank you, girls, for sharing that song, Trust and Obey. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Yes, we can rejoice over the enemies. We can go out singing. A choir won the victory because they trusted in Jesus Christ. And they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Just how great was that re um, victory that was won? Well, Three days, they gathered the spoil from the army. It was so much. Three days working to gather all the spoils that they took with them. And so, how has the Lord fought for you? What joy do you have to share because of Jesus fighting for you? I want to give a few moments time for if you have a testimony of how the Lord has been fighting for you to give encouragement to all of us, I want to give you that opportunity to share right now. Who would like to share how God has given you special help, special victory in a battle that you may be facing? Any of you have battles that you're facing? Victories that have been won in your life? Everybody's too bashful. Dale. Who else? Ivana? Well, 
you want to come up here, you can. Just don't preach a sermon. It's a, it's a very short, uh, very short story. Um, I just want to show how big God is. It was uh, really surprising for me at that moment. Um, so um, I had a house that uh, we built in Centralia, Washington, and that um, I was renting it out. Um, the mortgage, uh, I had two mortgages on it, and I was able to refinance one in 2007 to like 3%. The other one was only $35,000, and it was 8%. So then I was renting that house to the renters. The rent, how they paid, covered the first mortgage payments. And the second one, I had to pay out of my pocket all the time. And I was thinking, that would be so nice to get those $35,000 somewhere to pay that off so I don't have to pay mortgage all the time for that house. But at that point, we didn't have much money, so. 35,000 or $2 million was a save for me. We just didn't have it. And I was, I was trying to um, call them and refinance, and they said, oh, you need this paper. So I did all these papers and sent them, oh, one paper is missing. Okay, I get that paper. Those got expired. And it, you know, it's all the financial information. You have to do your like, uh, business, your income, your net. Oh, it was so much time, and I had little children. So I did it a few times, and finally said, no, we cannot do it. I know, okay, fine. Uh, and then we went to the camp meeting in Oregon. We usually go every year with my husband. And there they, the guy came and he preached how God is great and that we need to give God and um, uh, you know everything we have, our donations, and he's going to bless and he's going to help with everything else. So we need to donate to God until it hurts, not just a little bit. And then he made a like appeal for us to, to to donate and said, if you can't donate now, if you don't have money, make a plea, and God will provide the money. And we talked to my husband and said, well, how much it will be that it hurts? <laughs> 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 and we thought, like, oh, well, we can preach like $5,000. For us that time, it was a very big amount of money, like $5,000. It really hurts because we didn't have any. Um, okay, so we made a plea and we put the paper. We didn't even donate anything yet. <laughs> And then guy called from conference, like, are you sure it's five? Maybe you wanted to put 50. He said, no, <laughs> it's 5,000. <laughs> and for us, we didn't have any. He's like, well, he told us God will provide this. God will provide. <coughs> so after camp meeting, we come home. And in the mail, I found a paper. And the paper says, it was from the bank. And it says, we looked through your case, uh, you know, on your mortgage. And we decided to dismiss your loan. Just, like, forgive you, 35,000. And I was thinking, like, it must be a fraud, you know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot be real. Uh, and it says, if you're against that, if you disagree, just give us a call. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. So I better not call <laughs> and then and see what will happen. Uh, because if it's a fraud, the bank will come and say, hey, you missed the mortgage, right? But I don't want to call in, in case they will misunderstand me. And like, so I didn't call for three months. And nothing came, and uh, so I decided to call them and say, hey, I just inquiring about this loan number. I said, oh, this doesn't exist. It has been closed three months ago. <laughs> and I told like, Shane, like, look, the God is so great. We made the pledge. We didn't even give a penny yet. We, only, we, we just gave a pledge to, you know, give God during the year. We, we didn't even give anything yet. We just come home. He already gave us $35,000. How great is so that God has unlimited resources. God has unlimited power. That was just such an like, inspiring thing for me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> One more person. Anyone else? I'll see right here.
I know that all of us have stories of how God has been impacting our lives. Those stories are very important for you to hold on to, to refresh in your mind, and to allow God to continue to give you the victories in fighting the lions. Closing hymn is number 524. Thank you, Father, for this story that you have given to us of how we can have victory over the lions. In Jesus' name, amen. Today.